Hi everyone, time for another native plant spotlight. I'm standing next to golden ragwort, also known as Senecio and also known as golden ground cell. Um, don't let the name golden ragwort fool you, it is a very beautiful plant. It has a lot of uh, practical purposes alongside of just its standard aesthetic and intrinsic value that you see right here before me. Beautiful yellow flowers, even has a very nice, subtle smell. You do kind of have to get your nose up into it, though, to notice. Anyway, let's take a closer look and see what we have here. All right, that's better. Now we can get in here and actually see what this plant is all about. So as you can see, beautiful yellow flowers. But that's not the only thing that it's known for. It's known for having two types of foliage. I'm going to go down here really closely to what we're looking at at the base. Here are some lobed leaves kind of almost heart-shaped with uh, teeth on the edges. And then as it grows and it starts to flower, it forms these longer leaves that you can see right here. Here's another good example of that longer leaf that will form as it goes into its flowering stage out of its vegetative stage. This plant is great for pollinators. Um, the carpenter bees in my backyard are loving it. Um, they're probably not loving me being right down here amongst their food source, but they're off burrowing and mating in the eaves of my garage at the moment so I think that they are a little bit distracted anyhow so now I said that this plant is beautiful and it does have a nice odor to it also a practical use is it is a great ground cover it is also very 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 hardy and I must warn everybody it is also quite aggressive now I planted it here in my shade garden knowing full well that it was going to spread and take over. Um, some benefits to that were the jack in the pulpit that you see right here were protected by a lot of our early or late frosts because the ragwort actually grew faster than that and covered it up and protected it. How, the way that I've used it is there are spots in my yard where there is a slight erosion problem where it is hard to get things established to a point where they can actually help with my troubles with erosion. So I have since been thinning this out and transplanting them through various areas in my yard and in my gardens where something that is aggressive like this can take over and do its job. Um, it's easy to thin out. It's not really a huge problem. Um, if you don't mind having an area that could be kind of like a monoculture of this particular plant, I'd recommend it. It's very nice. Um, it's also one of the added benefits to his highly aggressive nature is that an, an aggressive native plant is a very good way to combat possible aggressive non-natives or invasive plants. So keep that in mind. It is good in the landscape setting, um, but like I said, just be prepared. Thin it out. Give it to your friends. Spread the spread the ragwort love. Um, but I would say excellent plant for a shade garden. Now in the shade, it can handle pretty dry soil conditions and it will do very well in a shady, moist area. Also, it will do well in a part to mostly sun area or sunny area so long as it is pretty moist or it gets enough water. It is good in a meadow planting. Um, it'll do very well and complement all of the other perennials and grasses you might have in a meadow. And uh, its aggressive nature is a little bit tempered by the fact that it is with other plants that are good with and are also slightly aggressive as well. So, a couple facts about this plant that I have found, um, ethno uh, botanically speaking, is it is actually edible. Now, I don't like to focus too much on the edible traits of plants in my videos because I am not a dietitian. <laughs> I'm not, I, the FDA, as far as I know, I don't think has approved it. So do some research, but I will tell you what I've learned. Cool little facts about this plant. So the leaves and the roots have been used by native Americans to make special teas to help with different kinds of ailments, um, that the human body may go through. I'm not going to go into them because like I said, I'm not really supportive of eating these or consuming in any way. I just like to show them off and, and share what I've learned. Um, so besides teas, ointments are also made using the leaves um, for a various wound treatment. Um, there is an alkaloid present in it. Um, low, uh, 
I guess it's a low concentration, but it is toxic. So one of the benefits to that is that it is not really sought out by browsers. So mammalian herbivores will not seek to eat this particular plant. You might notice some nibbling, but that is quite all right. Um, a lot of uh, rabbits will try and take a taste to see if they can eat it, and if they like it, they'll well, devour it, and if not, they'll leave it alone. So other things that I have learned that are pretty cool about this plant, as I mentioned, great for pollinators, such as carpenter bees, cuckoo bees, helicted bees. One interesting thing about this that I have come across, well, I wouldn't necessarily say interesting, they make awesome flowers for a bouquet. And because it is such an aggressive plant, it does not mind having a few of its uh, stalks trimmed and taken inside and put in a vase if you would like to do so. I would recommend it. We do it all the time. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video about this, uh, this really cool plant. It's a great plant. As you can see, it is doing very well next to my wood poppy. The uh, wild bleeding heart, trillium, and some sensitive fern, and also the jack in the pulpit was enjoying the added protection from the plant as well. So uh, I'll be back again with another plant in the near future, and uh, I really hope you all go and uh, research this one a little bit more, maybe even, or give it a go and plant it in your garden.